No, um, I am going to be looking at it uh, probably um, tomorrow. I'll be I'll be looking more closely, and just give, just giving feedback as to you know if you've posted it correctly, you know, uh, and so that that's going to be that'd be nice to be able to to look at your stuff, and um, I'm going to have to yeah. I'm going to have to redo my library orientation because I, I rushed that because I noticed that I got a little confused with the dates yeah. and it's really due Thursday. I thought it was due yeah. Sunday. Yeah. So I just did a, yeah, you can go back in there and job, I think so I'm going if, to go back and edit it. If it's uh, yeah, you can edit it. So that should, that should be, that'll work as far as that. I'm going to redo that part. I, and I know someone um, submitted, uh, we submitted a, uh, one of their papers uh, for the essay and wasn't able to delete the, the one that they didn't want. So I went in there and deleted it for them. So there is that option too as well. So let's see. Yeah, I did kind of rush the paper too. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that's, that's okay. Hi, Roxanne. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi. Roxanne. Hello. Very good. Yeah, let's see. I'm just going to wait another minute to see if anybody else comes on. Uh, we have four, five, including myself. Um, we've been having a total of between eight and nine. So, and I know that there, there's there been a couple, two or three new new additions to, to, the, to the cohort. So, uh, and, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll see some of, of them come on. You know how many there are of us in total in session three? In session three, according to the roster, uh, um, and you can see it as well, I think, uh, let me look at it real quick. I, I was looking at it and I think what I saw was, a, I'm not mistaken, about uh, just about, I would say about 15 students. But let me double check real quick. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14. In the roster, um, it says 15, but one's a test student and that's not a real student. That's like for me to be able to go in there and look what, what you all see. Um, but so there's 14 and what I've noticed though, I think we've had eight uh, come on to um, our Zoom sessions, so. We'll see. I mean, the uh, what the, to the the real number becomes as you move forward. So, and when you you do that, um, your leadership class with Dr. Honorio, you'll be able to um, to really get the true number then as well. Because see, what is it? What's going to happen? You you are all all registered for these three orientation courses, uh, tutorial courses, and and they go with you in this first session. But the real like class that you'll be taking will be the leadership um, for the leadership for um, in global context for ministry and leadership for ministry in global context I think that's what it's called and here's Ken um, and I think you'll get the real number there hey Ken there continue to be um, zoom meetings for that or is that primarily just the discussion base. No, so yeah, the good question. So what will happen is uh, you will um, be in a, uh, your class pretty much you guys will do on your own, you know, based on the assignments like you've been having. And then you will have, I believe on Sundays, uh, can you all hear me? Okay, good. Uh, so on Sundays, you'll be able to, I think it'll be on Sundays, every Sunday in the evening, um, the Dr. O will probably have a session with you guys to kind of touch base to see how you guys were doing and, and also have a time of prayer. So that way you do have like a weekly time where you, you come together, but it's not a... In other words, you don't do any coursework uh, in Zoom meetings. It's just a time of fellowship and review and uh, prayer. So, hey, Ken. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Yeah. Hi, Ken. Hey, how's everybody? 
I'm at work, so excuse my attire. No, no worries. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and start. And if others come on, I will, um, I would add them. So um, that's, it's good to, to have everybody. Uh, let me start us with a word of prayer and then, then we'll, 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 we'll begin. Father, I just thank you again for, uh, you're such a good God. And, and we know that there's nothing impossible for you. It may be impossible for us, but in your hands, we can, we can walk through any and every situation that is before us. I know some of us um, are facing financial um, challenges or facing physical challenges, um, emotional, all kinds of different challenges that we're facing, but we can trust in you. We know that you are the God that speaks to our storms and brings calm and peace and, and helps us to, to walk on top of those uh, stormy waters. So Lord, I just pray right now that you continue to work in our lives, help us as we work in, on this orientation, and we give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace. All right. Amen. What's good? We got uh, Loretta. Good to welcome Loretta tonight. Uh, she Loretta. she actually is uh, one of one of them uh, new in the cohort. Was able to finally get all registered and enrolled this week. So Loretta, welcome. Hi, Loretta. Hi, hi. I have my my little buddy here, my son <laughs> CJ too. Say hi. 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 Hello. <laughs> So I will be muting, of course, but sure, I will be sure. listening. <laughs> okay. Good to have you, Loretta. Thank you. Right. Gerline's coming on, so we'll get her to come on at this point. All right. So as you guys have spent time already in um, orientation three, which is the first part of research and writing, as, as you've gathered at this point, um, those are the three areas that we will um, be uh, Let's see if, if we can have everybody mute their, their mics so there won't be any feedback in the background. Thank you there. Appreciate that. Um, the three areas, as you know, is, is populi. Um, where the course is hosted, then the library DTL is the second platform. And the third is, is um, the research and writing. And as you began and looked at the video, the orientation, it, it does go, we looked at that first part of those four lessons in, in the tutorial MCM003, which is Re Research Skills and Writing Center. Uh, the information there is really helpful. Uh, I do provide a, um, tutorials that are linked to those very aspects within Chicago Manual Style and Turabian, which I encourage you to, when you have time, you're saying, where can I find time? I know that's the prayer that we need, the prayer of miracle that God makes a way for us to have time. Uh, but when you do have those moments, I encourage you to uh, to look at some of those tutorials because it does bring in more, fills in the gaps, you know, I mean, a lot of what you're receiving at this point, refreshers for some, for others, it's a, maybe a new um, style of writing because if you did a degree in, in a different discipline, you would have probably done MLA or, 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 or APA and this is Chicago, it's just a different set of standards of writing. And so uh, what I'm saying with that is what I'm able to cover is really helpful in trying to get as concise to help you in writing your papers, especially orientation four. Uh, I give you some, some, I show you some of that in, in the video, which you'll have access once you finish the quiz for this, this orientation three, it'll open it up for you to do orientation four which we will go over on Thursday, which will be nice because we'll look at some of that stuff tonight, but on Thursday, we'll be able to look at um, more specific, some of the examples and what 
would be required in, in your writing. So, but that's what I wanted to make sure uh, you all had that information. But let me go ahead and share my screen with you. And I'm just gonna look again as a summary, and then I'm gonna open it up for you to ask questions on, on, the, on the writing and, and research for us. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, to you guys. And let's share. All right. So in Populi, as you log in, right? Well, let me just go ahead and do that so you guys get, get used to logging in and watching. Your, you probably have already begun to do that. Um, you, you know, I already have mine in my web browser and it already opens it up. So I would encourage you to just go ahead and put it on your, your web browser, put it on your bookmarks. Mine is right, oh, well, that's it. Where is it? Right here, Populi, login is mine there. But it's recognized me because I go in there so much. I'm gonna go in as a student, and you log in, and that's you know the homepage for your NSBT. This is where you have uh, your, your alerts, your feed, your events, your to-dos, your courses. Um, see, it's interesting, in your alerts, it actually tells you stuff within your courses. So this is a way that if you wanted to, if we're gonna go into our research, you can, instead of going down here, you can go into, into your alerts and click on the course and it takes you right to there. Or if not, you scroll down here and let me see if anybody else is coming on. Okay, let me admit Loretta again. I think she might've, all right, there we go. Um, and close that out. Okay, and so in session three, um, research and writing is what we're going to go into so as you <clears throat> go to lessons this is basically gives you the intro to uh, transitioning you know into this into this program into this graduate program in theology of all things and in your particular track uh you know there's going to be this whole aspect where you need to we're trying to help you get these research techniques and strategies so that in this platform of doing research and writing uh, you can have some resources to to access uh, and then as you saw and in in, in the video i covered uh, and you can see here more in detail what i covered about those very aspects when you come into our program what we're looking for you is that you will develop uh, research and writing skills in the whole process while you're in the program at, at NSBT. And as you, as I showed you, there's concepts of writing, uh, there's writing process skills, or reading and th reading and thinking skills, and research skills, uh, which we we are helping as you continue. You know. All of this doesn't happen overnight, so we're not expecting that to be the case. But what we want you to realize, these are things that we want to see develop in you as a graduate student at NSBT. And much of this happens as you are doing your assignments uh, in your courses uh, in our program. So let's go to the next lesson. Uh, here we talked about what it means to be graduate level writers. So this is the theological term. So you know how at NSBT and especially with Dr. Bernard, he talks about faith and culture. And what does that really mean? It's really looking at the context, right? So that's what is called by contextual theologians and scholars or even practitioners. So, so what, what's happening at NSBT, our goal in our master's program is that you as your graduate level writing, you will turn out to be contextual theologians, contextual scholars, contextual um, practitioners. So now you got these big words you can tell your friends, I'm a contextual scholar, I'm a contextual theologian, I'm a contextual practitioner. What that really means is you are wanting to do what Dr. Bernard is really pushing this the whole school toward. And even as you have been a part of um, his church or his messages. It's about basic 
interaction of faith and culture. Uh, and what, what we see here is models of interaction, faith and culture. And you might not even realize that some of you are, are already probably within one of these models, the translation model, the anthropological model, the praxis model, the synthetic model, the transcendental model, the countercultural model. What are those? Well, I'm glad you asked because you can read it and look more closely in Stephen B. Bevan's um, Models of Contextual Theology. And, it, and if you click on this, it would take you to DTL and, and go ahead and, and log in, um, NSVT, then your student ID, you go in, and a login system problem. Let's try again. What happened there? Let's see if it's there. We go. Um, and that should not be the case. It should open up to that particular book. I'm going to fix that link for us. But let me go ahead and look at something. Let's see if it lets me do it here. Models of um, contextual. There it is. And let's put that as a title. And here we go. Click on that. And actually you can you can go into the book and look at it. And so, but just so that you had an idea of of what that meant, and it, you can find those definitions within the book and see. When you look at yourself as a contextual scholar, practitioner, theologian, uh, what model are you really working in to interact faith and culture, which would be really interesting to look at more closely and, and work towards that type of model that works in your particular setting and ministry and, and uh, marketplace and your, your roles that you are in. So that's one aspect of what we mean by graduate level writing so that I put this in there so that you can see, okay, all right, so I'm a graduate level writer. So what does that mean in this particular setting at NSBT? Meaning it means for us that we want to interact with, with our culture and engage our faith in our culture. And what does that mean? And that means that you are contextually interacting with faith and culture. And that's why this term contextual theologian or scholar comes about. Then I come into what it means gradual level writing by your papers and the level what, it, what is an academic paper supposed to be like in your courses basically here i review list for you review and discuss the scholarly literature synthesize theories models and course readings present critical analysis research and scholarly insight in an objective manner are formatted according to chicago Turabian standards are written in the scholarly voice and you're saying am i really going to accomplish that Yes, with God's help, yes. All things are possible. Remember my prayer this, as we started, nothing's impossible for God. All things are possible. We need to put in the work and, and this can happen. And what I'll show you in orientation four, and when you watch the video, you're gonna see an example of a paper that, uh, that turns out this way, that all of this is seen. And, and I, I will say to you, and let me, I want you to see my face when I say this to you. I'll share the screen again. I want to say to you, when I started my graduate level writing and, and I thought I'm the worst writer, uh, I'm not going to be able to, you know, accomplish this level of work. And let me just say to you, um, after my first semester of classes, I kind of, when I was completing the semester, I thought, whoa, I, I, just, I just finished one semester. And I was like, okay, maybe I can do this, you know? And then, you know, what's so funny is after I would write some of these papers, of course, you know, I mean, it took time to get more efficient, but my first ones were not the best, right? I kind of look back and I kind of want to hide under the, the rug and under the bed because I thought that's so, so bad. But then as, a, as I began to practice and work at it, can you believe it? I would read these papers and I think, is that really me writing? And did I really write that? Uh, because it, it really, you know, you begin to hone in um, this ability, this craft, and it, and it happens. So I, I'm no, you know, I would 
the Lord say, you know, he's um, no respecter of person. I'm not any better than you, you know. Um, it's taken me a while to get here. And so, I mean, but at the same time, it does, it does happen. So I wanted to encourage you and let you know if I can do it. I know you said, you're going to say, I know this has been said and people have told me, I promise you, if I can do it, you can do it. I mean, the grace of God is his grace that it's his favor upon us. Even, I, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I wanted to be serious too at this moment. His favor enables even us to be good writers and to learn how to become writers. And if you tell me, uh, Dr. Nolivo, that uh, his grace can enable me to do all this, yes. I, I, that's why I wanted to let you look at my eyes and, and see I'm not just blowing smoke at you. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm, I'm testifying. I'm giving you a, an academic testimony today that, I mean, we give testimonies about, you know, how good God is in our, in our spiritual life and in our finances. And I would say to you that there are testimonies of God also working and his spirit working in you when you do research and writing. I, I, I got to tell you, I actually felt the Holy Spirit, uh, and it's, it's, I'm not, I need to let, I, yeah, I, I want you to see me again. Uh, I'm not kidding. Um, I was reading a secular book in the, in the library at Regent University where I did my doctorate, and I was reading a secular book, and there was a thought that came by through, through my head. I know that the Spirit was speaking to my heart, and I had an encounter with the Lord, with his spirit, as I'm reading the secular book, because God was saying to me, I can even use a secular book like this to speak to you. And so, um, you know, if God used the mule, he can use an academic mule. You know, I mean, uh, it's, it's no different. God, God is God, and God is God of truth. And so I just, um, I don't know, I think the spirit just came upon me, and I had to just give a little academic testimony to you guys so just you know i i what i want to really say to you and i would say this about my academic journey um uh, i never thought i would become a doctor in history and church history but god's plans right and how he put that in my life and and i just wanted to preach i just wanted to be an evangelist uh you know and uh and and but god had other plans and and i, I still got to do all that <laughs> But also, he wanted me to be able to have the tools to be able to teach, you know, and to help uh, others in that process. So I just wanted to just encourage you as you look at all this and you're saying, my God, what have I got into? I, I said that and I've wanted to throw the towel many times in the past. But, you know, this is a way that God can refine you and your thinking and in your abilities that um, he says, you know, he invites us to think together. Uh, and so um, just wanted to encourage you that this is something that is doable. All right, let me get back. Uh, I got I got some of that testimony out there. I, it was in my spirit. I had to just share it, I, I, you know, and, and let you know that he is able. And then as I, as you saw in the video, we talked about what the scholarly voice was. Um, as you look at that, what I want to just highlight real quick, and as you saw in the video, you know, what, what that all means, um, you know, is the type of level of um, writing that you're going to do. Uh, and, and what I will say to you is that that's what graduate level will bring you is, is, is a voice that, that pre presents unbiased, high level and evidence-based evidence writing and thinking is what we're trying to get. And what that becomes is, you know, you'll get to a point as you get more practice, you'll have good grammar, syntax and tone. And then of course you saw my do's and don'ts uh, in that. But I wanted to hear, as I showed you in the video, I would spend time here as well, looking at these resources and these links, because these help you as well to understand what we mean by scholarly voice. Okay, so let me go to the next. We looked at the, the do's, right? Uh, use proper syntax. You can take time to really look at this. I explained it in the video some. Uh, follow the rules of punctuation. Uh, this is referring to how you want to 
format. You need to make sure you format correctly citations and footnotes, uh, and then also proofread and edit your work. Those are the do's about scholarly writing. And then the don'ts, just two that I wanted to highlight. There's others, but two that I wanted to really highlight, and you can spend more time, like I said, is don't write in the second person narrative. Because what happens there is that it doesn't come across as, as, as a, as a um, objective scholarly voice, but when you're talking in second person, it's more as in conversation uh, and informal tone, and that does not help you in trying to present your arguments in second person, but that's why you want to look at the third person, which provides a stronger um, voice and tone. And then don't rely, and this is, a, this is so true, uh, and I think I showed Ken this as well. Uh, it's not only about your writing, don't rely on software to correct your writing, because yeah, I mean, grammar check is good, spell check is good, grammar is good, but I mean, to become the place where your first-hand knowledge, you master it, yourself is better because even when I use some of those programs, I can go back and I said, no, that's actually just one way, but that's not the, the full way of, 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 of saying that. But I, I think, Ken, you asked the question regarding citation. Remember when we looked at DTL and, and if we can use the program there and I showed you why sometimes software will not give you the complete way of citing and I showed you the difference between the the one that the programs were giving you was more i believe was if i if i understood if i remember it was uh giving the first name last uh first first name last name and it was more in terms of, as the footnote whereas i showed you that it didn't give you uh the the uh, bibliography where it's last name first so so even that is something that you come to get to know as you do this. And then let's see, and then we actually looked at formatting uh, in, in Turavian Chicago style. And here, again, I, it, you, these are the two manuals. They're both the same. Uh, I, you need to have them both. Um, so you can either, this, you can have it, you can do it online, uh, you know, do a subscription or you can get the the hard copy, copy of it because what happens is DTL does not have these books and this one I, you would need to purchase it as well. It's just it's necessary to do the, the, the type of writing that you want. Then I provide for you tips on formatting. These are these are basically um, tip sheets on how to do the margin title page uh, bibliography and as you saw in the video you click on this and it gives you basically the explanation on, on the margins of this, explaining how to, how to format that. So that's why that's really nice and helpful because it gives you all this information uh, accessible. You can download it by here or printing it out for yourself. So that's one way. And these are the different aspects that you'll need when you format for your papers and essays. And then we talked a little bit, well, before I go into plagiarism, and then let me just show you what I did as well. What this is nice, this I created for you. In one, in one handout though, in four pages, what I just showed you up there, I created it for you in this with corresponding <clears throat> sections of where you would find this information in Turabian or Chicago. So that's why it's nice. Cause see, if you wanna look at the page number and you can go to Arabian section A one, point a i'm sorry i gotta make it bigger because i'm actually not reading that correctly um one a point one point four point two that gives you um pretty much the the way you want it the information of, of, of how to do the page number and the, and that's the all the different aspects that you just saw in the tips for formatting that you get each what's nice is i give you so much information for each of these sections and then in that particular handout why is that one really good because that's the way you're going to need to format in this particular chicago Travian notes bibliography and that's why this handout is invaluable for you as well because both those tips here and this in this particular handout they go hand in hand but this one's nice because it, i i'm able to designate for you where you would find it in those books as well and then it gives you enough information to be able to format it yourself okay 
And in orientation four, I even give you a template of how to do that. So, so you know, I, I, I have your back. I know all of this type of information is so necessary and needed. So I'm trying to make things as, as how would I say, not easy, because all of this is work. <laughs> to do this correctly, it's going to take you to do the work, but at least I'm providing information that assists you to do the work, okay? So, so I don't want you to be blind as you try to do all this. And plagiarism, you need to really do look at this. Uh, what we want to really say here is we want you to be honest academically and have integrity, meaning that as you come across ideas and concepts, concepts of others, that, that you need to credit them. And, and it tells you how you need to do that within the text, within footnotes, and as you're writing, that is really important uh, to, to avoid plagiarizing. As what that means, basically, you don't wanna just, as you quote, you know, and, and not be able to give credit. That's why the footnotes are there. So you're able to provide the information, even if you're not quoting them directly and you're paraphrasing or, or summarizing an, an idea that's not yours, you still need to acknowledge where you got that idea. And that's what, uh, why we want you to keep this in mind about avoiding plagiarism. Okay, so, so that's what we covered. And also Chicago Basic Styles, real quick, uh, you can spend time here. I, again, provide information to, this, to help you understand what it means, the Chicago style. What is Chicago style? What is Turabian? How do I format my paper? What's the difference between citation and bibliography? How wide do I have to cite sources? All this information, right, um, is provided for you. And you can access it. If you click on these, these are as well. They, they're just external sites that take you and give you more information on that particular aspect. And that is within the Chicago Manual Style online uh, information. And that's where I, I got these links and I take you directly to the source that gives you the, the particular explanations. So um, that's what we did in the first orientation. Um, and so let me now just open it up for you guys as you've looked at this orientation on research and writing. Any comments or questions that you have regarding this last platform that is, is, a, is a, it's one that's going to take practice to, to become efficient in, uh, and, and we're here to provide the support. So I know it, there's so much information in those course, in those courses for you. Uh, let me show you one last thing. And I meant to show you this real quick, um, because this will be with you during the session, right? Uh, and you're going to be able to have all this, but let me show you in your library, remember how you solve the DTL? Here's your links. You always will have the library with you and the links for library. Well, look at this. I also have the tips for Chicago Turabian, just what you saw right there, they're here. The Chicago Style Basics, it's here too. And then the rest of this is for session orientation four. But for orientation three, what I'm saying to you, you will have these, this information will go with you because it'll always be in your NSBT uh, page or you go to library and links. The library will go with you. The tips on formatting will go with you. The Chicago style basics will go with you. And as we covered orientation four, the information on orientation four will also go with you as well. So that's what's the nice thing about it. Although I'm giving you more information within these orientations and these videos, the, the gist and the, and the links to most of it is with you in, in your library session. So, all right, I've been, I've been on a roll just talking my head off. So let me go ahead and, and open it up for you guys. Any comments or questions that you have? Well, this is good. I have comments and questions. Sure, sure. I don't know. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony. I understand you cannot have a testimony without a test. Um, and I, you know, I am being yeah. tested, yeah. Um, truly being tested. So I really appreciate that you shared that 
because I, I have had to write, I have multiple degrees, and I am feeling like, why did I do this? <laughs> um, and, and now I'm realizing I'm not the only person that's experienced, why did I do this? Exactly. Um, the, the, um, I have a few questions. Sure. One is regarding the assignment that's due tonight. I'm a scribbler. Okay. And that simply means that I put all of my stuff down in hand because I'm a tactical learner. Yeah. And then I go back and put it together in a paper. Sure. I didn't do any of what you just taught today. Right. And so I'm a little nervous. No, no, Because, no. you know, I'm looking at my watch and, yeah. and I'm saying, yeah no okay. no okay that's really good if you notice and you know what if you notice what i did i i intentionally had those assignments before be due before this orientation this week why because as i as i put in both of those um assignments and if you recall in the video it says please do not uh overstress yourself because we're not looking at this moment for these particular aspects we're wanting you to practice on how to how to put information for your discussion, how to how to upload a file if it was the paper that you were going to submit. So right now, as you submit all this, and it's non-graded, it's, it's just for practice of, of being able to do the mechanics of how to use Populi, how to use the library. And, and, and as you notice, the library in that second orientation, I'm doing two things for you. I'm 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 having you guys use the library right and then use populi again so you did it for one assignment for you know for one orientation and then for the another orientation you're doing both the library and then again so i'm giving you two times to practice um well actually three times to practice discussion right the first time i'm really having you try to interact the next two times is just to post something in the discussion board and and at the same time dually i'm making you be able to use a library but in no way did i say that it needed to be already formatted as we're required to do so at nsbt um so just to clarify that to you now what will need to happen as you move forward once you start in your new classes is you need to start to implement some of some of that the formatting aspect so so and now don't worry what i want you to do is just upload a file and what's going to be key there is that you upload a file that's in Word, okay? And and if it's not formatted this way, it's okay right now because I didn't require that for those assignments, okay? So I don't want you to get off this and spend the next, you know, three hours trying to get it all sorted. No, I just need you to upload something, you know, okay. and that's, that's, uh, that's a good question. Any other comments you have? So the, the next question that I have is really regarding uh, the plagiarism piece. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's, it's interesting that, that it's, come, it's come up, it, it kind of is a very strong integrity issue. Mm -hmm. And so I, I guess my question is, when you're quoting something you heard, hmm. like sitting in a sermon yeah. or listening to a sermon, or even a song, I pull in multiple places, information. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes something comes to your mind and it's just bam, it comes to your mind and it's relevant to whatever you're speaking about, writing about, etc. Yeah. So how do you do that? Or is it appropriate, I guess, is really the better question. To when you... Are you talking about when it's not in writing? Is that what you're saying? Correct. Right. Well, you know, um, what happens in those type of situations is what we, re what we, some of the, some of the way to, to, to manage that it's, it's that it's understood it's in an interview, right? Or it's in a message, but what's helpful sometimes is to transcribe some of that if you find that sermon or if you have that interview, you transcribe it because you're gonna get exactly as you listen and you get those words down and you want to then quote it as you have transcribed it. And then as you, as you cite it, it's, it's understood it's a sermon, it's understood it's an interview. So it, it's already looked at from a different lens academically, but what's important is that you look at how Chicago or Turabian says, you need to 
the the how would I say it? the formatting rules of that particular source. So like I said to you guys, uh, and actually you'll see that. Uh, let me show you real quick. Um, so like when you're in in our let me go back to uh, that research and writing. So in this, I believe it's not till. Okay. It won't be till the next lesson, but let me just kind of show you real quick because it'll go over it. So here in your crash course uh, in citations, this is really helpful because it, in, this, in this link, it gives you a guide to uh, some of the Trabian style citations and it illustrates it for you. So let me click on that. And where that's taking me, it's taking me to the online Chicago. So let me, let me show you how I got, you can even get there and I can show you, let me go ahead and move this real quick. Uh, close that out. Let me, I'm going to show you. Look, I'm a, I use Chicago so often, but look, I just put the letter C and it already brings it up. <laughs> so, so that, okay. So if you put the Chicago manual style and you come here and the, the citation quick guide is right here. So this is really helpful. You can come here and look at some of this. And if you go to the citation quick guide, it's the same thing what I put as a link uh well let me finish going through there and you want to do you want to always go to notes bibliography this is what we utilize we don't use author date style we use this notes bibliography you click on that and and that's the same thing that i did here that's when you click on that it opens that same page see that it opens that same page so um and it's right here all right so here as um as you were asking for that, look at this. It gives examples of a book, chapter and parts of an edited book, uh, translation, science book, an ebook, um, journal article, a news magazine, news or a magazine, book review, interview. Here's what I wanted to show you, interview. So look at, this is the way the footnote needs to look like for this one. And this is the way it looks when it's a, what's in a, in the bibliography. So what's important for you is, and okay, so that's for the note, right? But look at what it says here. So for more details on many examples, see chapter 14 of the Chicago Manual Style for examples and same citation. That's what you want. Now what's interesting in, um, in what I'm showing you though, Turabian, it's chapter 16 and 17 in Turabian. That gives you more examples that are not just listed here. So, and, and I'll go over that in orientation four, but what I was trying to just highlight for you there and now is that uh, these manuals understand those very questions you're asking. It's just what happens is as you come across a, sur a source, a specific source, you need a manual to then show you, okay, how do I cite that source? And that was your question. How do I cite a sermon? How do I cite an interview? You know, and so if you go to that manual, uh, you'll find it specifically. You can also Google it. You can Google Chicago manual. You can put Chicago style um, interview or sermon, how to cite it, right? But I would rather go to the manual because I'm not certain whether whoever quotes that is really quoting it from the manual. They probably are, but I rather, you know, as a researcher, you want to go to the source. You, know, you always say that, you know, go to the source of, of, of that particular uh, question. Good. Uh, this is good, good comments and questions. I want to piggyback off of um, what I know said, um, yeah. because I feel like if we've been uh, members of CCC for any significant amount of time, our, <laughs> you know, thought processes are so heavily influenced by a past there. It's like, how do you differentiate between what you're, you know, stealing essentially and what you've just <laughs> adapted into your way of thinking? Like, you know, my whole life, I literally grew up at CCC. So I, you know, I feel like part of my mentality and, you know, he's taught Christ and culture and, you know, accepting, you know, certain things as your worldview. So I feel like when I'm writing, it's just going to come out naturally. And sure. I would never want to intentionally plagiarize, right. but at the same time, it's like, this is literally things that I have absorbed 
you know, yeah. over a significant amount of time. So I feel like that's a little nerve wracking to navigate. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's, it's, it's okay. So that's a good point, right? I think that's a good point. What I would then suggest, right? Because it's the same thing. Let's think about it in terms of, of our Christianity. Obviously, the Bible, the New Testament, Old Testament is pretty much a part of our, um, what I say, our, uh, our thinking, our living, it's, you know, what we breathe. So, so obviously we're going to, we're going to um, articulate that, that aspect of, 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 of way of thinking, way of life. So I think similar, and I think it's, it's Dr. Bernard's, you know, actually a interpretation of, of the, of scripture, of Christianity in terms of, of in, interaction of faith and culture. So, I mean, I think that's just another step moving in that direction. Now, uh, what you're saying though, I think it comes to a point where when you're trying to make a point or you're arguing something that you recognize it being not your, your specific thought. So what you need to do is, okay, um, as you listen to Dr. Bernard and he's, he's preaching and teaching, all of a sudden, you know, these different names come up that he's mentioned, Niebuhr, right? Uh, you know, he's probably mentioned many other different, different writers. So the role is there is that you go in and you start to look at these particular sources that he's mentioned or he talks about, and, and then you are able to verify. And then at the same time, you bear, are able to identify some of the things that you see. And so now what's interesting is that you're able to not only give credit to Dr. Bernard, as you know, it's coming from him, but at the same time, you're seeing that he's influenced by, and you could even, you can even say that because you can see that thing, his line of thinking coming from these particular sources. For, for example, his whole idea of faith and culture is, is coming from Christ and culture, which is Niebuhr's, you know, and that it's interesting. You guys will, We'll, we'll run into that in this next, in your first course. That's why I'm able to mention it because I put up those courses. So, um, but yes, I mean, to your question, I think it's, it's, it's important. What's really important is to be able to, to have that awareness because if you have that awareness, then you are more cautious to not take credit for someone else's idea. But at the same time, if that idea is now become your idea, your interpretation and your application of it is going to be it's going to be somewhat different. It's going to be the same, but different uh, than than um, than than the source itself. So to best to best help you in that is that you can say in in writings, you know, as um, for example, as I can write something as um, Dr. Bernard states, and you know whether it's in a sermon, whether it's in something he's written and you put it in there um, and you put it as a quote or, or you just paraphrase it, you could, also, you, could also, you could also footnote that. The challenge there is to find that particular sermon, right, of where you got it. But, um, but what I was going to say to you, if you're not necessarily, you know, bringing him into your writing, it, it doesn't come into play because if you're already thinking that way, you know, it's not, for example, you know, I, when when you're talking about when you talk about the Lord being being the light of the world, right? You right away know it comes from John, right? The book of John, where John uses the analogy of light. So what I would do is I talk about Jesus being the light. I'm going to make reference just like John says, and I can parap I can give the scripture or even the the citation of the scripture, but then I begin to articulate in my words what John has said, but I'm already giving them credit because the idea has come from John who has said that Jesus is the light, but then I have also my, my way of interpreting of what John said, and, and that's okay to say, but see, for, for someone that's, that's reading your work, and especially in your classes, the fact that you just mentioned where you got it is already avoiding you plagiarizing and just saying, I came up with that idea that Jesus is the light of the world, you know, that, so that's, that'd be 
ways that you manage that. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. It's vo you're gonna have volumes of what stuff that Dr. Bernard has said, but um, you know, I mean, um, I would only say to you that you want to incorporate stuff like that when you have come across a certain quote or a certain idea that you know where it came from. You're able to say it was from this sermon on this day, or it was from this interview he did on because he does Instagram, he does Facebook, he does you know uh, on the website. And you're able to source that. You're able to cite that because you you know where the link is. So, but what I'll say to you, just having that that awareness is a good sign. So it, it'll help you not, it'll help you avoid plagiarism when you have that thinking, right? Because you said, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to plagiarize. And, and so that itself will, will safeguard you. So but that's, that's good though, Teresa. That really is a challenge. Um, I, I am still kind of stuck with uploading my essay. All right, let me look. From, we can go in there. Let's look in there. So let's go into, so that is for the first orientation. Yeah, Dr. Novos, I am I'm kind of stuck with uploading. And I noticed the grade said F because I didn't upload it properly. No, no, no. Don't worry about that. Uh, that's, it's, it's non-graded, so it's not, nothing to do with that. Don't, those are, those are not. I'm where it says the essay assignment, okay. and I put it in where it says drop and attach, and it's there, but then in submissions, it says, you have not submitted this file um, for this assignment. Okay, let me go ahead and look in. I'm going to go ahead as, uh, as an instructor for that. Go ahead and go in. And okay, so I'm, I'm looking at the at 1.2 essay assignment. Right. So you're Beverly. Let's see what you yes. have here. All right. So in your essay, yes, right there. So I did it over there. Do you see okay. where it says Beverly there? Yeah. The thing, the thing is uh, that that's the and that's that's good that you're showing this. If you can mute if, if you can mute yourself so I can explain. Then then if you have a question, we can. I can um, go ahead and, and, and let you continue to, in the discussion. But what I was going to say, the, the reason this has happened, this is for the essay. Oh, right? Let me see. Okay. I didn't want to do that. Darlene, can you, can you mute your, your mic, please? Oh. Thank you. All right. Um, so what I was going to say here, what's happened, Beverly, is that for the essays, you all need to upload a document. Okay, it's not a discussion. So what I what you ended up doing, you put it here, right? You you paste it as a comment. But what you need to do is you want to for this, it needs to be a document uh, that you want to submit. I I uploaded a document, so I don't know if you want to show me. Yeah, let's go to yours. Let's see. So that's that's the only that's the reason why it's not showing, Beverly. I clicked. I clicked on the document. I go to where it is, and then I get an error. I'll do it right now. Okay. I click, click on the document. I right. go where it is Beverly, in Word. I got an error also, so I had to do it three times before it worked. Oh, I've done it three times, four times already, and I keep it, coming up with an error. So, That's interesting. So it doesn't let you. I'll I'll look at that because. Yeah. Let me. Uh, okay. So let me go into and I'm I'm I'll show it to you right now. Let me go into. Um, okay. Let's see. Grade uh, or roster. Let's go to roster. Yeah. Let me see. So Teresa, you said you submitted yours. Let me see. Where's Teresa? Uh, I did it uh, last night. I did it again today, and that particular drop area uh, is challenging. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, so that's the way it's supposed to be right there. So that's the way it's supposed to look. So let me, let me try something real quick. Let me go in as a student and I can, and I can try it. Test student and you know, 
see the issue that so the, is the first step that you click on the box itself yes you click on that box, box. let's see then i it comes it with where i go to where the file is okay then you click okay so let's go into the assignment all right i already uploaded something so um so let's say again let's say i, I i'm gonna upload uh let me see a word I, I click on the file we go into i click open let me see i just and then it says Holistic, it says uploading at 6%. It's uploading, mm -hmm. and then it says error. Okay. That's, is it still doing that to you? Yes. Uploading, and it's pending, uploading, and then error. And it oh. says, and, it, and that's it. Hmm. Okay, let me try something. I'm going to just mm -hmm. Word document. And you're using Word, correct? I'm using yes so i'm thinking maybe it's a doc and then i had d o c and then x and then i downgraded it to maybe it was a lower version of word to just doc you know a earlier version yeah let me and just none of it this. worked yeah because yeah. let's see sample essay and this is to to download something let me save it as. i don't know if it made any difference but i first um uploaded it to my google drive and then no. I uploaded it, but I don't know if that mattered or not. No, it, it shouldn't still matter. It shouldn't matter that. Let me go ahead and let me see this. I'm just going to play uh, essay one. Did you do it three times at the same day or another day? or okay, at this, The same day. I did it today, oh. earlier today. See but I had to do it three times because I did get an error also. Okay, you keep getting the error, right? Hmm. Okay, so let me try this. This is just well, it's CDOX, right? Gotcha. Right, so I, if I go to desktop, I look for that SA1, open. Maybe it's where I have it. See, no. I it, have it in it a it personal shouldn't, drive. It, I, it, it uploads it right away. That's so, true. oh, you have yours in a desktop. Maybe because I have it on a personal drive, I, I should put it in my, I'll try it out from my desktop. Yeah, so what are you using, though, uh, to, I mean, are you using a, um, is it a device, or when you're talking about a drive, it's just, it's connected to what? Yeah, so to my, per I have a personal drive, like an H drive. And it's connected and, to um, computer? Maybe I'll save the file to my desktop and try it from there. Yeah, I mean, because it shouldn't be an issue uh, at all. As you notice, I'm able to upload it without a problem. And so what happens is when I go... As the instructor, I'm going to go in as the instructor. That's why I have both accounts so I can see what you guys are facing. Um, let me go ahead okay. and go back in there. Uh, let's see uh, this tutorial for online. And then I look at, I'll go into the grade book, I'll look at the test student. And then I scroll down to. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Okay, so that's what, what it shows me. So if I click on, as, and as, a, as the instructor, I can delete them. I can delete this. Um, so if you have an issue, I, I think Ken had an issue on one of them. I was able to delete one of his. See, and then I click on it, and, it's, uh, and, it, and I'm able to read it. So, okay, let me ask this question. Does anybody else run into that issue that both Teresa and Beverly's run into? Anybody else run into that type of situation, uploading a file, the essay? Maybe to my documents, save. Okay. Let me see. All right. Let me see who's who's submitted stuff uh, in that essay. And then go back to my. Let's see. Yeah, I. I... Okay. Yeah. No. Well, let me just, so, I mean, I think if, if you have, so Teresa, you were able to though, right? Eventually you were able to. Yeah. The first, I'll try it again. The okay. first time it, um, it didn't upload at all. Um, the second time it looked like it was uploading. So it had turned partially green, but it didn't stay successful and I, I couldn't see it. 
Okay. Um, so I closed the browser and reopened it, and then I did it again, and the third time it uploaded successfully. Okay. So what 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 I need you guys to do is you continue to practice that. If it runs that issue, just let me know. Like again, this is practice, so it's not. It's I want you to practice. And these are kind of situations. It's good to find out as Beverly is finding out about this, then we can try to resolve it. So when she's in the real course, she won't have those issues, you know, yeah. so then, and I can also uh, let Populi know that some of our students are having issues uploading some files. So, so if you're having, if, if you have a similar issue, go ahead and, and let me know, write me. Uh, but this will be the first time because other students have really, I have not run into any issues. I know Ken's not on anymore, but, Watch, look at, I can show you Ken's. Maybe the file itself is corrupt or... Maybe. I, so, you know... Uh, um, can you do something? Can you email me that right now? And, 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 I'll, and I'll try to see if I can upload it and see if it lets me upload it. Yeah, go and try to do that. Yes. Yeah, if you don't mind emailing that, and I, I'll be able to see if I can, I can do that. Let me see... I want to show you Ken's. Where's Ken's? Um, 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 so here's Ken. His essay. See, he put his. I deleted one of his earlier ones. And and there's Ken's. So his he was able to upload his. So okay. So he's oh. definitely he had no issue doing so. Um, he uploaded it one that was not edited so that's why he had me delete the one he didn't want because see on your on your discussions you could edit or delete them but on your essay assignments it doesn't let you you could upload another one and then you could always email the instructor let him know which one is the one that you want them to use and that's where you would want to add a comment okay so let's say for example ken right here says dr Leos, this is not the one and he writes me a note saying uh please uh look at the second document, right? And then he posts that and that comment comes to me, not to the whole group, that comes to the instructor, okay? So if you wanna write a comment after you submitted it, you can here if you want, but that's not where you wanna put your, your essay, okay? Okay, let me, I know I've kept you already for, for an hour, but any other questions or comments before we? We let you guys uh, go. Well, I wanted to see if, if Beverly's ever able to email me that uh, and see. Yes. Um, Did you just send it? I see. Send to. Can I? I can I just? Because I'm using two different emails here now. Okay. So, may I have your email there, please? Yes. It's. Uh, you can send it to. Uh, e, uh, I, let me let me put it in the chat for you, real quick. Yes. Okay. So All right, Beverly. Uh, at uh, a new email. Dot org. Okay. Go ahead and send it to that that email there. Okay. Okay. New email to. All right. So, um, what is the assignment that you said is due tonight? Did I miss that? Let's see. The, the that's that's gonna be the the essay. The essay, yeah. The essay is due tonight. Oh, this essay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should work on it a little bit more first because I really rushed it on Sunday. When uh, um. Let me know to, when you send it, so we can try that. I can show everybody. Um, Yes, yes, yes. Um, in the chat, right? I'm using a different thing um, to reply. reply. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was to say, if you can email it to me on to that email. Okay, let's see. Yes, okay. I, I can't even see it on this. Oh, Beverly. Ah. Um, you don't see it on the chat. Um, 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 where is it? Is it in the chat? I, yeah, I'm, just click the chat. The chat button. I'm there. kind of oh, in the chat of this thing, Beverly. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. In the chat, here we are. In the chat, there we are. So e e um, and 
Capital L I V O S <laughs> at N A C T. Okay. And insert attach file and browse there. And this one and insert and send. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm checking right now. Still nothing yet, but you already sent it, you said? I, I just sent it. It's in my sent items. Okay. Let me, uh, try, it. Let me try it. Upload it. Oh, yeah. Yes, there it is. 809. It, it, it shows in my sent items. Okay. Thank you for taking um, time to go through this. Yeah, no, I just wanted to see. Right. Not there uh, yet? Not, yeah. E N V O L. Did I put it right? E N V O L I V O. No, you put it wrong. It's E N O L I. E N O L I. E N O L. E N O L I V O S. E N O L I V O S. Yeah. E N. Oh, I put E N V I Beverly. Sorry. All right. One more time. E N O L I V S at N S and then insert I that's the file. And Beverly and page modified. Sorry. It's coming. <laughs> Ah, now it's not. Oh, there it is. Send. Send. <laughs> Why can't I get that right? E N O L I P -E N S. E N O. I still did it wrong again. Oh my God. I mean, you can I'm also still not you can copy. You could barely. Why don't you just highlight and copy and paste? You can copy it. Paste it, yes. You know, because I'm using this other. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Oh, you're using a different computer as well. It's yeah. Control C to my email. And uh, I can do that from here too. My in and new email and Control V. There we go. Got it. All right, finally, so I attached the file. Okay, Go I got there. it. I see it there. I got it now. Oh, it's there? Yeah, I got it. So okay. let me let me share this with Um, you're muted. Sorry about that, people. I was going to oh, say what I was saying is I was muted, actually yeah. um, showing you that I'm going to log out as instructor and come in as a student, and I'll put it in my student 
and I'll come in and, and delete it afterwards, but I want to see if I'm able to if I'm able to do that right. So let's go into that into the tutorial. And it's for this one. On the test students, so I'll go to the assignments and then I go to uh, the essay. I already have that one there, but I'll click this one. Oh, oh no, that can't be right. Yeah, this is assignment for and open. There's no problem. See, it's there. I just uploaded it. So, so there must be an issue with your with your computer or your yeah. software uh, because there it's no not a problem at all. Because then I'll go into as the instructor to look at your document. Log in, oh. and then I'll go in. Session three. Go into tutorial. Go to the roster. Go to student. Go to the essay assignment, and then I can click on that. And there it is. Wow. So, okay. So I'll so just go I, ahead. Uh, I, I'll just go ahead and delete it because it's you know it's it's not for. Uh, I can't. Let me see. No, no, no. I need to go into student and delete that one because it's not, it's, it's yours. So there we go. Um, so yeah, uh, you should, you're actually, it's formatted correctly in Word. Uh, it's just for whatever reason, I'm not certain how you're uploading it from what computer you're using, but it's having an, an issue uh, uploading it for you. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm using actually, yeah, I don't know, I don't know why, but I, I've, I've experienced that before. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, should I just go ahead and upload it again and keep, well, it's done now, right? So, well, the thing is, what I would say is you pretty much it's we need you to be able to do it because then you're gonna have an yeah. issue for every class so we gotta we gotta determine what is the issue and one of the requirements when you look at uh the the, the student handbook it's saying the type of equipment you need to have so what you need to look now is look at what your computer is and if it's if it's if it has the equivalent of the the software that you need yes. because if so, not you're gonna have this issue over and over and over um, yeah. because it might not be compatible with what you need to be able to do the work online. So, so that's the only thing. That's why I was saying before, if you're using devices like a phone or an iPad, that might be an issue to do so, but it should be a computer and look at the, the basic um, uh, equipment that you should have. So, so then what you will need to do is just look at your system preferences and what, what type of system you're, you're utilizing. So. So that that's probably what 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 would help at this point. But what we can do is go ahead and um, and continue to work and let me know if how I can help you if you're able to find out more information if you find a certain you know if you have a laptop or if you have another desktop or and see which one it should I mean you you're you're I'm not sure how how, how you're having an issue when you're 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 actually the format of the paper is correct to upload. So, you're muted. I'll keep working on it and see what it is. I may just um, save it differently or in a different place. Okay. I, I have... Mean, obviously you did it, right? And I already got, I got the email, so it's no problem there. So I mean, even if you're not able to upload it tonight, don't don't get so stressed about it. Well, what this is a stuff. This is what we need to find out. That's why you have this orientation. Right. This what is the problem? Yeah. So that way, when you start, right. you can right. you can have that resolved. So uh, keep me posted, and we'll try to continue to work through this and and get you to a point where you're able to upload your files. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank All right. You. Um, I was gonna see if um. Garlene, can you close us in prayer? If there's no any other questions that or comments that's, that people have, um, what I'll just say to you, just finish orientation three. 
um, do the quiz so that I can give you um, orientation four, which I will open that up tomorrow uh, so that we can you can watch it for um, for Thursday when we have our last session. Uh, and at that point, um, we're doing well. I think we'll go review more stuff and and pretty much the only assignment for this orientation three is the quiz. Okay, so there's no other assignment. It's just going back to making sure you're doing the rest of the other stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We exalt you. We adore you, Father God. Thank you for what you are doing in our life, Father God. Thank you for bringing us to this program. Thank you for that session we have today, Lord. And just continue to um, speak to us to, um, to um, make us feel um, when we feel like, well, maybe that's not the, we may that not be ready for that program. Just continue to use people like to speak to us, Father God, to confirm with us that this is the, this is what you will help us do at this time. Just continue to help us in our writing, Lord, and just bring things to clarity, uh, clarity Father God. And everything that we learn, I know by the Holy Spirit, you're going to bring those to our membranes, Father God. Just continue to, um, Continue to stir us inside. Um, just continue to give us that passion to do what you call us to do. And um, thank you, Father God, for what you're doing, what you continue doing. Let us continue to um, be having clear clarity and uh, and focus and understanding as we are pursuing this program and to do all our works, Father God. Thank you for what you're doing and what you continue doing in our lives. And just let me pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. God. Thank you. God bless you guys. This is recorded. I also will we'll upload it for you guys and send it so you guys can have it as a reference. Okay. Amen. You all Praise have God. a good evening. Good night. Thank you. Night, You're everyone. welcome. Bye now.